We're here with Rex Wolheim, a NASA astronaut. And uh, Rex, I wanted to ask you uh, about your thoughts about how important this mission is, EFT-1, for the future of space exploration. You know, just how big of a deal is this flight? I think it's about as big as you can get. It's the opening of a new era. It's the opening of the Orion, uh, the Orion program, and all intents and purposes. And it's really exciting because it's that transition we've been waiting for. You know, it's been about uh, three and a half years since I last flew on the space shuttle, and we uh, closed the program down with the anticipation that these new programs be coming along. And here we are. It's really exciting to see this first launch of Orion. So do you wish you were stowing away on board this flight? I have threatened that quite a few times, but uh, I, I, yes, I would. It would, be, it would be awesome to be, even if a short four-hour flight would be neat. If they had the systems for us to be on board, we'd be there. And can, can you talk about what your role is and what is the role of the astronaut office in this flight and the Orion program at this point? Sure, and I'm the uh, astronaut representative to uh, the Orion program, so I work with Mark Geyer, the program manager, on his team, basically, and I give the, the, the astronauts uh, uh, aspect or you know input on on various design decisions and uh, you know we're mainly concerned with uh, the interoperability the way we the way we fly the vehicle and then crew safety and survivability and things like that so so we uh, watch all the decisions that are being made and and, uh, and put our two cents in where uh, we think it's important and uh, in the future what else uh, beyond the systems on this flight will Orion need to carry astronauts? Uh, what needs to be tested still? You bet. Well, main thing is the uh, environmental system. So we need to, we'll need a, a regenerable uh, environmental system. We can scrub the CO2 out of the environment. So they have a pressure control system. We need a way to, to, to scrub the environment. And then we also need all the, the crew displays, crew seats, all the restraints, all that kind of thing. So those things aren't on this vehicle. But uh, they'll upgrade it. And uh, eventually, on the, not the next one, but the one after that, we'll be able to fly crew on that one. Is it sort of frustrating to have to wait uh, seven more years to put a put astronauts on an Orion vehicle? Well, it's just one of those slow and steady efforts that you have to be a part of. And, uh, and you know, I'm happy to be a part of it. And, you know, by the time we fly, it'll be other crews that are going to be able to fly. But as long as I get to be a part of it, it's just so historic in nature that it's just people just want to just have a part to play somewhere in it. And, uh, and it's just exciting. And it's going to take a long time. We know that. But uh, sometimes uh, the, the race goes to the slow and steady competitor. And that's, uh, that's what this, uh, this program is all about. And can you... Uh Tell me how Orion fits into NASA's space exploration strategy with the space station and well, the main thing, as you know, right now we're flying is to the space station, and that's our great uh, research facility in space. It's perfect for that. You know, it's the size of a five-bedroom house, a U.S. national laboratory. You can do all sorts of research on it you just can't do here on Earth. We can learn about the human body. We can learn about uh, systems aboard the space uh, ship because, you know, we gotta we got to learn how to have systems that can work in space for six months, a year, two years or more. And the way you learn that is by having them up on space in the space station and finding out about uh, about what works and what doesn't work. And so that's, uh, that's our research vest that we're using right now. And uh, as you know, we retired the shuttle uh, about three and a half years ago, and uh, we transitioned to, we're going to have, we, right now we're flying to space station via the Soyuz of our Russian partners, but we're going to transition that to uh, U.S. vehicles uh, called commercial crew vehicles. And we have two companies that are on contract now, uh, Boeing and SpaceX, to build those vehicles. So those will come along in the next two or three years or so, and start, we'll start ferrying our astronauts to the space station with those. But now deep space, that's a tougher, a tougher issue. That's why it takes longer, and it says it's the slow and steady program, but it's not easy to go to deep space. That's why we haven't been there in 40 years. That's why nobody's been there in 40 years for a human space flight. And so uh, we're doing those, uh, we're developing those systems and, and things we need to do to, uh, uh, to put on Orion to make it safe for humans to, to go to deep space again. Thank you very much.